Hello, I am here at the University of Virginia Cemetery. I'm a professor here. My name is Stanley Stepanek. I'm in the Slavic department, actually. I teach a, a number of interesting courses, first year Polish. I also have a really popular course about vampires called Dracula, and part of that course involves a discussion of burial practices. In my special sessions during summer and January, I typically take students uh, for a tour of the UVA Cemetery, which is where I'm at right now. But because of quarantine, we can't do that, so I decided to make them a special 360-degree video here for a little project for them to do. So those of you watching this, please note this is by no means a full tour of the University Cemetery. I don't have enough time on this camera to do that, actually, since it's a 360 camera. And uh, this is specifically tailored for my students, but you will see quite a bit of the cemetery. I just want to mention first that what behind what is behind me here is the newest section of the cemetery, which was first laid out in 2016. Originally, they had intended on putting this section on the far end of the cemetery straight from me, and I'll get to that actually a little bit later but there's a reason they moved it to here. So this is the most active part of the cemetery today. You can still buy plots here as well as vaults for cremation. So if you look over there, you will see that there are cremation vaults that are around the walls. And just a couple of the parts, not all of them. So this is still an active cemetery. You were not able to really buy any new plots other than some more cremation vaults that are at the other end. Uh, since the 1940s, so this is a new section, but we're not gonna discuss that. Our first thing to look for here in our We'll seek and find is the oldest grave at UVA Cemetery. Now, as I'm walking towards that, I should note that UVA Cemetery is interesting to it's interesting to me because lots of students don't really know it's here. They'll see the walls as they go by to lunch and things like that, and um, biology buildings are right over to my left further, but they've never actually really looked sometimes to see what what's here. It's kind of hidden. It's it's basically right on grounds, not in the center of grounds. It's a short walking distance from the rotunda, but it's interesting to me how many students actually don't even know it's here. So you're going to see a number of interesting graves here. To my left is the Confederate section. I'll actually get to that a little bit later. I'm not going to comment on it now. But what we're looking for currently is the oldest grave in the cemetery. This cemetery was first laid out in 1828. Thus, the oldest grave is from 1828. And who is it? Here we go. <laughs> So you'll see a number of these tomb-type graves in this cemetery, as well as others, these flat-type tombs. Back in the day, people used to visit cemeteries quite you know, a lot more than they do today, and they would lay out picnics and things on graves like this a long time ago. Today, you really don't see that as much. Americans have kind of lost contact with death. So here is our oldest grave, Henry William Tucker, M.D., right there, 1828. He died of typhoid, actually. He was not the first to die of typhoid, but he was the first to be buried here, the dead of typhoid, and then there were others after him. So, first grave in the cemetery was due to a disease, and that's pretty relevant currently because I'm filming this during the quarantine of coronavirus, of course. So, that is the first part of this tour for my students and for their projects, so I'm going to stop this now, and then I will move on to the next part. You can navigate by clicking on the various links below for the timestamps. Okay, next part of the tour here, grave symbolism. In older cemeteries, you can often find a lot of interesting symbols and sculptures on graves, many of which people don't understand today because they aren't used anymore and people don't take the time to discover or really learn about them. So you may have seen some on the first part of this tour for my students doing a little project here. You can pick out some of those you saw and write them down and say what you think they mean. I'm just going to pick out some now that I think are kind of interesting that I've noticed a bunch here at the cemetery in my years walking through here. First thing I want to mention before I do that is on my right here you can see some smaller graves in the corner of the cemetery. That was actually a space that was reserved for people that were dying during the 1918 flu pandemic when it hit UVA. So that's what that part was used for at that time, temporarily. So, on the grave right here, we have Margaret McDowell. Notice the urn on top. That's a classic old symbol you see in a lot of graves. The urn symbolizes end of life. Sometimes you will see on the top of the urn, there'll be a small structure that looks almost like a flower. It's actually a small flame. So symbols that sort of suggest the end of a flame, right? It's a symbol of the end of one's life are very common on older graves. This one here I really like, Charles William Kent on this tomb type grave. You can see what looks like an X and a P there at the end. It's also on the other side too. What the heck is that? Greek letters, which chai and rho, stands for Christos, right? It's a very old symbol you sometimes see representing Christ. Here's a good one. And the Smith grave here, born at the University of Virginia. Oh, someone was born here, and then died in Kansas City, and then was reburied here. Okay, Smith. 
1892. What is that symbol there with the diamond and the, is that an eye? That is, it's eye of God. You sometimes see this eye of God symbol in older graves. So if you see that, you know what that is now. I mean, there's various Christian symbols here you can probably figure out in your own. On the left there, let's see, Joseph Howard Smith. What is that, a sun? It symbolizes setting of one's life, right? So I guess it goes along with like the urn or the little torch on top of an urn. Classic ones. Going back to the main avenue here in the cemetery. And by the way, sometimes you will see these smaller pillars. It just marks the sections. They aren't special graves or anything. Okay. So coming over here on my right is one that I think is pretty cool. Sometimes see this. What is that symbol on there? Oh my God, a protractor and a ruler or something. That is a Freemason grave. That means that person is a member of the Freemasons. So you'll sometimes see symbols of fraternal orders on graves. Irish type cross there. Now this is probably my favorite symbol in the whole cemetery on this grave here. William Thornton oldest son, etc., etc. People often see this, and students, when I, when I usually do this as a walking tour, they will see this and they'll be like, oh man, they, they, got, they paid to get this really expensive grave, and then <laughs> the person did the torch upside down. Oh man, that is totally purposeful. This is the only grave I've, I used to work in cemeteries, and this is the only grave I have ever seen in person in all the cemeteries I've visited and worked at that has this symbol on it. I've heard of it, I've seen it online, this is the only one I have ever seen in person. It's a torch that represents life and it's upside down because it's snuffing out of one's life. That's what it is. So that goes along with the other ones I've talked about. If you look, for example, speaking of that, if you look, for example, over here to my left, you see a number of urns, right? You got a smaller one here, then you have this like obelisk with one on top. The one directly to the left of that has a small flame on top. That's that symbol I talked about earlier. And let's look at one more. It sometimes confuses people because they think it's damaged, but it actually isn't. This one coming up here directly in front of me. It looks like a pillar that broke off. And students sometimes see this and they'll ask me, oh, there's someone like damage it, you know, some horrible gray vandal or something. No, nope, that's also a purposeful design. It's, again, it's another symbol of end of life. That's what often lots of these old symbols mean, but it's just been lost to time. Today, you tend to see the people personalize their graves more. I've seen some very interesting carvings on tombstones these days of things that people like, like guitars and stuff like that. And that's a more modern thing. Back at this time, symbols were a lot more esoteric and, and sort of... Um, deep, I suppose you could say. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next part of the tour, a very important part of the cemetery. It's the African-American section of the cemetery directly in front of me. That's for our next part. Okay, so as I am continuing here, I am now in a newer part of the cemetery. It's grave my left here, for example. 2015 was the latest burial on that one, so there's still a number of active plots here. You just can't purchase any ones here. The new section from 2016 is the one where you can. Okay, so very important part of the cemetery here, and speaking of that new section, that is why it is where it is. Originally, they were going to place that here at the far end of the cemetery. Those of you who are familiar with UVA would recognize some of the dorms on my left, but especially the Dell area, which is down to my left there below the hill there a little bit, which they're doing some um, new construction on for special projects they're doing there. The new part of the cemetery was originally going to be here in this section that is now enclosed with a partial wooden and stone fence. What is this? Well, while they were doing their excavating, getting ready to put that new section here, they discovered a number of unmarked graves. So there is a sign here directly in front of me that makes it really clear this is the African American Cemetery at the University of Virginia. Truth be told, it isn't actually the only location on grounds where there are people who were enslaved laborers that were buried here somewhere. This is just the biggest area. And they didn't even know it was here until they began to do work towards this new section. So when they, they realized that there were unmarked graves here, they assumed it was probably enslaved laborers or, you know, servants, as it used to be said in some of the old UVA documentation you can find from back in the day. This is one of the ways they verified what this was, is they discovered in one of these old alumni newsletters, I believe it was, that the servants were buried outside the cemetery. So just keep that in mind at first, right? How these people were treated as human beings, that they weren't even allowed to be buried within the cemetery. 
So, whenever they discovered this and did more research, you can see that there are a number of names they were able to associate with people that are buried here, but also a number of them are unnamed. We have an unnamed adult, for example, 1825. Unnamed child, 1853, 1853, probably roughly a year old, tops. So, lots, some of these at least have no names, and this cemetery here includes enslaved as well as post-emancipation people, right? African Americans who were buried here were both enslaved and post-emancipation. So even after emancipation, they couldn't be buried in a cemetery. And as you would assume, they didn't have the resources and they didn't have the same system for funeral practices that people in the white section did. So for example, whenever UVA used to have its anatomy center at this special building that was near what is Alderman Library today, um, they would actually have people grave robbed from African American cemeteries to study those bodies. I'm not sure if this was one of the cemeteries in particular, but it just gives you some sense of how, how short the resources were for African American communities, even for funerals. So let us just take a short moment of silence here for these people who are buried here, some of which have no names, and then I will move on to the next section of the tour. Okay, we're going to move on to the next section now, and again, we are all aware that UVA has a conflicted history, there's, there's no doubt about that. We have a memorial for enslaved laborers that's being put near the corner currently. So, for my students, please be respectful for your comments for this particular part of your assignment, and now we will move on to the next section. Okay, so... Now we are coming into one of the newer parts of UVA Cemetery. There are a number of graves here from the 80s, 60s, and 70s. One thing I should state here, since this is currently during the coronavirus quarantine, and we're at phase one in Virginia as I'm filming this, you may notice that the grass isn't cut here. Well, they're currently, you know, not doing that as often, but typically this would be very well kept. Okay, so. One thing you may notice in this section as we're going around is that there is often way less information written on newer graves than you had in the older ones. And that doesn't necessarily have to have anything to do with money. This is just something that started to develop over time. Of course, today it's a lot more expensive to get a gravestone than it was many, many generations ago. But it's interesting to me in that you often will find today that graves have very limited information about the people that are buried there. If we look at this one here, for example, Starnes, 1989, it just gives you their name, date of birth, date of death, nothing else about them really. Whereas on those older graves, they will often go into detail about who the person was and what they did. I've seen some interesting graves in my career working in cemeteries before I was a professor. One of my favorites, in fact, actually mentioned on the grave, it said killed by electricity. That, that was a protest grave for whenever electricity was first introduced back in 1910s in that particular part of the United States where I was working in that cemetery. So, there are a number of interesting names you may have noticed as we're going through this tour here. Those you familiar with UVA names are sometimes on dorms and things like that. So, Clemens, for example, is right directly in front of me here. And that's a very well-known name as part of the library system, right? Clemens Library. But let's go to one of the most interesting graves in UVA Cemetery, to me at least, and that is this grave that has the name on it Anna Manahan. Okay, who is this? So you'll see here we have John Manahan. Okay, then what has got there? You may have noticed already what's going on there on the other side here too. Who is this? Oh my gosh, is it possible? We have a member of the Romanov family buried right here at UVA Cemetery. I can't believe it. It says right there. H-I-S, well the most important part is H-I-H, Her Imperial Highness. Anastasia, or properly speaking in Russia, it's Anastasia, Anastasia of Russia. Oh my God, it's the long lost Anastasia. She's buried right here, born June 5th, maybe 18th, 1901, died February 12th, 1984, right here. I can't believe it. Well, first off, she's not actually buried there. The woman who that is, Anna Manahan, she actually was cremated and she's buried somewhere else, but because John was her husband, 
they, he put her name here on the grave next to him. She's not actually buried there. I had heard once they actually put some of her ashes here, but I haven't been able to verify that yet, so I'm, I'm not definite on that. So, oh my gosh, do we actually have a member of the Romanoff family here? Anna Manahan was the most famous imposter who claimed that she was Anastasia. There was lots of controversy about her. I remember hearing about her on the news when I was younger. I believe it was 60 Minutes or something like that. They were doing an interview with her, and she had a very believable story about who she was and where she came from. It wasn't actually until after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991 that it was discovered that she was a liar. So how they verify that? Well, one of the problems was whenever they discovered the Romanov grave outside of Yekaterinburg uh, in 1991, they actually knew about its location before, but the Soviets didn't want to reveal it because they were in the middle of collapsing. And so when they did research into the grave, they discovered that apparently one of, if not two of the bodies were missing. So they were missing the boy, Alexei, and one of the girls. Based on the remains they had there, they thought they had Anastasia, but the height didn't seem to match up, and there were some other details about it that was making it confusing. It wasn't until 2007, when genetic work was better, that doing genetic testing and going with another grave they found, they discovered that actually the Bolsheviks had buried two of the family members in a separate location to make sure that the White Army, when they came through there, was confused about where the family was buried or if they were buried they discovered that she was in fact dead. So we're not, the only mystery is we're not sure which of the two graves Anastasia was in. We know by genetic testing she was in one of them, but because of the size of the bodies and the locations and the confusion about when they were buried, we're not entirely sure which one was hers. We just know it was her in one of them. So this is a good example that you can put almost anything you want on your grave. Okay, now let's go to the final part of the tour that I'm doing for my students here and for those of you watching this, and that is the controversial Confederate section of the UVA Cemetery. Okay, now we come to what is the most controversial part of UVA Cemetery. I'm not saying whether or not you should find it controversial, I'm just discussing the basic facts and showing things to my students who can't do the actual walking tour with me this year. So the location of this part of the cemetery is directly to the left of where I first started my tour. What makes it controversial? Well, again, I'm not saying how you should feel, what you should think, but I, at the time that I'm filming this, I'm sure you are aware of the relevancy of the discussion of Confederate memorials scattered throughout the South and what should be done with them. I'm not saying whether they should be torn down. I'm not saying you should think so. I'm not saying you should disagree with that. But this is one of many of these statues that is throughout the South. This one is interesting though, and I often find that students that I bring here to see this part of the cemetery have noticed the statue, but never noticed exactly what it was. I had one student one year, African American, and she said, you know, I just thought it was some soldier. I never realized until we were actually standing here that it was a Confederate soldier. Now I have different feelings about it. This is the thing, is that the location of it, if you look over to my left here, it's a short distance away from the main area where students are walking to class and lunch, so lots of them don't notice it, and they don't notice the cemetery in general quite often because it's walled in, and unless you come up to it, you don't really see what it is. So it's interesting to me, lots of students don't even know the location of the cemetery, let alone that this statue is here. So I'm just going around it briefly here to show you some of it. What's important about this that you should note is that this was originally erected to be essentially a tombstone for everyone buried here. Um, at the top there it mentions the name of the company that put this in place and it gives you the date of when it was actually finished, 1893. <clears throat> so with some private funding including professors and students at UVA at that time, this statue was erected. The names that are on here, and there are roughly 1,097 dead buried here, are organized by state and then alphabetically as you probably would assume. The name of the sculptor is right up there. You can see it there on the bottom right of the sculpture. I know one professor at UVA here often refers to the sculpture as being hidden in plain sight, and that's a good way of saying it. So, here we have what is a Confederate memorial close to the center of grounds at UVA. UVA is a conflicted history, as we know. We looked at the African-American section of the cemetery earlier in this walking tour. So, what I usually do here for students, <clears throat> whenever we are doing this walking tour in person, is we have a discussion then about what they feel about the statue, what do they think should be done about it. We can't do that currently because of quarantine, and that's why I'm making this video for them. So, they have a digital project where they will be answering, some que uh, answering one question about this and engaging in the discussion, what they think about the statue. The, the complexity here is that it's essentially a grave marker. You can notice that there clearly are not a thousand or more gravestones around this cemetery. Whenever this happened in, during the Civil War, so before the Civil War, before the statue was, was put up, 
What happened was when, that de when people died that were Confederate, the UVA hospital used to be near where the corner is, uh, actually right across the street from what is Mellon Mushroom today. So when soldiers that were Confederate died, they buried them here, and essentially kind of haphazardly, they just started to put them in the ground. And then they made this a, you know, impromptu Confederate cemetery. So the dead are here. I'm not saying the dead should be removed. And the statue was meant to essentially be a memorial for all of them since they all didn't have gravestones. As you might notice though, there are newer graves here that have clearly been here for less time than others. That's because some local organizations, including Daughter of the Confederacy, um, again, not saying who you should disagree with or agree with, have been raising money to slowly put in gravestones for each name and the proper location as far as they can discover. So you may have noticed that. But originally, this was essentially intended to be a tombstone for all. It's not not just some random statue. That's what makes it so complex and difficult to understand and also understand what you might think you should do with it. So this ends my tour here for my students as well as those of you watching it. Again, please know this is by no means a complete walking tour. It was very purposeful in how I organized it. You can go through and navigate through the timestamps I have listed below if you want to see earlier parts. Otherwise, that will conclude this tour, and I invite you to please visit the cemetery sometimes. It's one of the lesser known parts of UVA that people often overlook, but there's actually a lot of wealth of information in it and many things you can discover that's a really interesting part of UVA history. Okay, thanks a lot.